looks like Canada's got its first vending machine for marijuana. The initiative is run by the BC Pain Society in Vancouver. According to the organization, the vending machines prevent theft of pot, but you still need to supply a doctor's note to buy it. The BC Pain Society won't disclose the exact source of its marijuana, but hopes the machines are a trend that will be available in other parts of the city. Our main focus will be getting vending machines into other dispensaries if they want them, which I doubt they will, but like I say, nursing homes and medical clinics. <laughs> Sun News contributor Ada Slavinsky joins us with more from Vancouver. Ada, welcome to the show. Vancouver is a city where they ban just about everything normal from light bulbs to round door handles, not even making that up. Of course, cigarettes <laughs> are forbidden just about everywhere. But a marijuana vending machine, hey, dude, chill out. I mean, it, it's, this is a city with, with crack pipe vending machines, so marijuana vending was the obvious next step. Well, and, and Ezra, let's be clear here. The police sit, told me that uh, selling marijuana, of course, whether it's done in a vending machine or in a street corner, is illegal. The crack pipe vending machine that you brought up also falls under the distribution of drug paraphernalia, selling drug paraphernalia, also illegal. So we have this real dichotomy, as you brought up, between things that seem normal, bagpipe busking. I mean, who could be offended by that? Uh, banned in Vancouver, but we're seeing uh, these, these kind of machines cropping up in clubs almost, as, as I would describe the, the BC Pain Society. It sounds like it would be a, a very medical clinic, but it's not. When you walk in there, there's big screen TVs, they're advertising the uh, World Cup soccer, you can sit in their lounge and uh, smoke some marijuana that you just purchased from the machine and, and lounge in that atmosphere. Um, they're also advertising twice a month, they're going to be having uh, flamethrowers and sword eaters and different uh, different activities and attractions going on. So uh, very, very interesting uh, things that you almost feel like you, you couldn't quite make up. You know, it's a freak show. They want to turn it into the drug cafes of Amsterdam. Uh, let me show you this next clip, and thank you for bringing it to, uh, to us, Ada, of someone showing how this vending machine works. Take a look, folks. The way it works, you come in through the gate, you show your ID card to the staff at the front, and uh, once you're approved, you come in, you figure out what selection you want, and you take your money, and you put it in the acceptor there. And then let's say we want number 14, Master Kush, a half ounce for $50. Press number 14. And there's my medicine. <laughs> this is my medicine. That's what daddy says when he's drinking whiskey. No, kids, that's daddy's medicine. It's only for grown-ups. That, you, I mean, just looking at that, so many common sense things jump to my mind, like if someone is not there to check ID, any kid can buy it. There's, if that's 50 bucks a bag, there's at least, you know, 20 bags in there. That's 1000 bucks worth of pot. Someone's going to break that plexiglass front or just steal the whole thing. Maybe maybe a janitor in the building is just going to take it with that. I mean, there's so many goofy things. I don't actually believe this is about proper controlled sales of marijuana. I believe this is about breaking down the absolute last remnants of any social control on drugs. I don't need I think it's a stunt designed to normalize marijuana and make it legal despite the criminal code and other provisions. And to make more money off of the sale, right? You don't have to hire anybody. And there's no limit on uh, the amount of marijuana that someone can purchase from one of these machines. When you go to a dispensary that's authorized by Health Canada, they monitor very closely, if you have a prescription for the drug, um, how much you're taking. But here at this machine, uh, once you get past the gate, they have kind of a waist-high fence. Um, that they say prevents people from, from coming in who aren't, uh, aren't 
haven't been prescribed the, the drug. Uh, but once you're through there, you can purchase as much as you want. And they have a, a handy ATM. Uh, if you don't have cash with you, you can take cash out and use that to buy as much as you want. And then who knows, uh, who knows where that drug goes. So definitely making uh, the substance more available, more accessible. Um, and Charles Verabioff, the director of the BC Pain Society, was saying, you know, Trudeau has his vote. He's very supportive, of course, of legalization because then he can put these machines machines in corner stores as well. So not just medical clinics and, you know, he said nursing homes, um, but, but on the street corners and in, in various uh, locations around the city. So then we will be seeing much more of this. Huh. You know, it's so obvious to me that this is part of a general wearing down of public morality. And the fact that the police, as you said right at the top of our interview, this is illegal, just like selling the drug paraphernalia of crack pipes is illegal. But Vancouver police, First of all, they're politically scared and run by politically correct brass as it is. When there's actual violence, they take years to take steps, as we saw well, uh, with the sports riots a few years ago. But they also stand aside with eco-terrorism, breaking into refineries or pumping stations. I think that B.C. has a serious law and order problem that they're standing by. And if you do not stand up for the law and enforce it, it's like the broken windows theory. I mean, if there's one broken window and it's fixed right away, people understand, oh, this is a law-abiding neighborhood. But if you throw one rock through a window and no one fixes it, within a week, all the windows are broken. I think Vancouver is becoming a lawless zone, and the police and the leftist mayor are happy with that. Last word to you, Ada. Well, Ezra, I, I just want to say that the media has done the majority of the work for the police already. They're saying this is not a priority, but we've already found where these machines are. We've asked a lot of tough questions about who can have access to them and the security and that kind of thing. So really all the work that's left is for them to go in and, and make an arrest. Um, and I honestly think that it's more work for them to be issuing statements to me saying that it's not a priority than to actually go and do something about it and then we could report on that. Um, I definitely agree with you that it's, it's setting a dangerous precedent and I will very much doubt if we don't see many more of these popping up. Ada Slavinsky, thanks so much for joining us from Vancouver. Great to see you again.